grace to you all this morning and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Things are not what they seem, are they? Especially on a day like today when we celebrate All Saints Sunday. Things are not what they seem. It would be too easy for us to locate saintliness in this communion of believers on this side of the front pews. To look at those pictures of those saints near and dear to our hearts, those new saints, those declaring and claiming their saintly identity as the others, without extending that identity of sainthood to this side of the front pew. Things are not what they seem, are they? Six times in the book of Leviticus, God says, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall be holy. Now, I know that it's a difficulty for us in all saints to claim that title of saint for ourselves. Very often, our protest is, I'm no saint. You've probably said it, I know I've said it. Because we have an idea of what people mean when they call other saints. And we don't want any part of that, that kind of holy roller, self-righteous thing going on. I'm no saint. I know that I have weaknesses, shortcomings, sins we would call them in the Christian community. Failures, frailties. All that's true. But God says, you shall be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. And I think the more often that as we think of saints or holiness, we put the focus somewhere else, we miss the opportunity, the grace, the power that comes from acknowledging that God has created a relationship with us, for us, so that we might be holy. Now the important thing to remember about holiness, about saintliness, is that we never get that on our own. We don't get that outside of relationship with God. God says to God's people, you shall be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy, which means you're holy because you're in a relationship with me. When you're not in a relationship with me, whether through denial or ignorance, then you're not holy. You're not behaving in the way that you could because you've disconnected yourself from the source of holiness. There is no internal source of holiness in us as human beings. It comes from God. There is no internal source of saintliness in us as human beings. It comes from God. <laughs> so to say, you shall be holy, you are saints, is really, if it makes it easier for you, to say more about God than about us. But so much about us, too. Things are not what they seem. You are God's holy people. You are God's saints, as these are God's saints. I love that reading from Revelation, don't you? What a beautiful, beautiful picture. One that we need to hold on to. But even in that, Things are not what they seem. There are details that kind of give us a clue to the fact that something else is going on here. The one that caught my imagination is where John has this revelation of things that are happening. And he says, the lamb seated on the throne will be their shepherd. Well, lambs aren't shepherds. Lambs are the goal of the keeping of shepherds. That's what shepherds do. They take care of the lamb. But John's vision tells him that the lamb and the shepherd are the same that the one who gives himself for the sake of God's people will continue to look after them and care for them. And that there's a whole different order of being when it comes to God, as opposed to what we're used to on a daily basis. And to remember as God's people that things are not what they seem. I was with a group of folks um, earlier this week, and... Uh, Things were not, something was not in place, and I pointed it out, and uh, the person who was in charge said, um, progress, not perfection. I like that. Progress, not perfection. Uh, I'm thinking about our saints, right? They're all perfect, weren't they? 
Every one of them without flaw, without shortcomings? Of course not. Of course not. We won't talk about that today because we love them and honor them. But progress. But now perfection in God's kingdom. You can recognize them as saints because somehow, in, in ways that you probably can't even begin to specify and articulate, they brought a measure of holiness into your life. What do I mean by that? Maybe holiness is hard to recognize. Well then, let's call it by a different name. They brought a measure of love into your life. <laughs> Because those are the same thing. If only God is holy, and we hear also in Scripture that God is love, then where holiness is, love is. And each of these saints have brought a measure of love into your lives, which makes them holy, which makes them saints. And the same is true for these new saints who bring love and holiness into our lives. An idea of what life could be, what life ought to be, what potential God puts into life for our sakes. And so the reality becomes that holiness is all around us because God is all around. And this morning at our second service, six of our young men will declare that they want to be part of that, that they intend to take responsibility for living out that holiness in their own lives with gratitude to parents and mentors and teachers who have brought them to this place. But now, with their own sense of responsibility, they'll participate in God's holiness loose in the world. They are saints. Progress, not perfection. But progress. Things are not what they seem. And thank God for that. Jesus at this critical moment in his ministry gets up to speak to the crowds. And he says things that don't make sense. But we've all heard the Beatitudes before. And so we go, oh, the Beatitudes, that's nice. But the Beatitudes don't make sense in some ways. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you on my account? Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you? Matthew's community experiencing real persecution hears these words and they scratch their heads and go, Really? Is that what it means to be blessed? Yes, because they're aligning themselves with the holiness of the world. And by their willingness to speak love to a situation of hatred, they become entranceways for God's holiness to come back into our existence and our reality. As every one of these saints has done time and time again and will continue to do time and time again for God's people. And as you will do, sisters and brothers, to be that opening for God's holiness and love to come into the world. One of the things that we celebrate today is a sense of unity, unity of purpose, unity of calling, unity of identity. Did you hear that in, in the letter to John? You are God's children now. That is who you are. Not because of you, but because of God, because of God's claim on your life. And so, as I've said so often, the secret to living out that reality is more about surrender than activity. It's more about not trying than trying. It's more about allowing than forcing. Because we have that unity of purpose and identity and community together. But also this day is about hope. In a world that is so filled with division and fear, on this day of all days, as we celebrate these saints, we hold up unity and hope. Because we know that God will never leave us or forsake us. Because we know that the community we feel as family and friends and loved ones goes beyond the limitation of death. 
Because you still feel these saints in your lives. They're still there. Not the way you want them to be. We acknowledge that. There's that brokenness. There's that separation. But they're in your heart. They're in the way you behave. They're in your thoughts. They haven't left. Because God brings them to us again and again for our strength, for our remembrance, for the joy of the love that we share. And these beautiful new saints, because bring that so openly, so willingly. Because so far, thanks be to God, they don't know any better. <laughs> Perfection, not progress. <laughs> And you too. Please, if you take anything away from today, it's to not exclude yourself from the community of saints. It's to remember that God has called you to be God's child and knit you together in this wonderful community, not just here, but with God's children throughout the world. And to remember that our lives are about growing into that holiness into that saintliness that God gives to us as a gift. So things are not what they seem. The persecuted are blessed. The lamb is the shepherd. And we are saints. Because that is what God does. And God has the final victory. And God has us all saved in God's heart, in God's arms, in God's mind. These, and we to come, and these new ones, and all of creation exist because God is holy. And so we too are holy, always making progress, not yet perfection. Amen.